and so I kind of like step up, there's a rush coming, I step up here, and I step up here, and I just see Demarcus Robinson streaking across the field with the safety sitting right there. And so instead of looking at D-Rob, I just kind of give him the look over here, and then I just hit him right there, right on the tra where the trash can was. And so instead of looking at him, I just, I just got put it out there. D-Rob made a great play, and uh, it, I mean, it was a cool play as the season went on. So, Patrick, last night I went to a tattoo parlor. Oh, gosh. And I met a guy who is in the last two months done more than 20 Patrick Mahomes tattoos and he called you the king. <laughs> so you hear that, what do you think? It's crazy, I mean, it speaks to the community that we have here. Uh, in Kansas City, they love football, uh, they love the Chiefs, and uh, I mean, they have that passion. And so we, we love going out there and playing at Arrowhead and uh, getting to kind of go out there and show out for them. Does something like that when someone says, I'm going to get a picture of Patrick Mahomes on my leg for the rest of my life, <laughs> When that is said to you, are you like, give me a break? Uh, it, it is crazy. Like, I, it is a whole life thing. I mean, it's a tattoo. It's permanent. But uh, it, it, it's cool. It, re it really is cool. You see it on social media. You see it when people send you the pictures of it. Uh, I don't have any tattoos. But uh, if, if they like it, then go ahead and get it. <laughs> I want to go way back in time right now. And I want to ask you, your dad told me something about you and about baseball and how important that was to you in terms of all of your arm angles and being able to throw. How do you look at the importance of baseball to where you are right now? Yeah, I think it's huge. Uh, playing shortstop my entire life, uh, when you, you catch a ball on the move, you don't have time to set up and, and make the perfect form and make the perfect throw. And so all the, all the throws I'm throwing across my body and still have- That to, leads to this yeah, and this Yeah, exactly. And this. I mean, you think about it, you go up the middle, you catch it, you catch it right here, you get the slide and throw it sidearm, you still have to throw it perfectly at the first baseman. And so I feel the same way when I'm on the football field. When I make the scramble to the left and I see the guy down the field, it's just easy for me to just open up and make the throw and still be accurate with it. Yeah. Um, you mentioned to me earlier in this year about, when I asked you about confidence, you talked about going to Major League Baseball clubhouses when you were a kid and how confident all those players were and how you sort of kind of siphon that off from them mentally. Yeah, I mean, it's all competition. I mean, if you're in a big league clubhouse, if you're in an NFL clubhouse or any clubhouse, I mean, you, you, you know how much they compete in whatever they do and they believe they can win. And I mean, I feed off that. I feed off my dad growing up. I mean, he never let me win. He made me compete and try to win. He's, he still thinks he throws harder than me. And so that's just the kind of confidence that you have to have in order to have success on the, on the field. What was, he, what was he on the radar gun? He got up to he got up to like 100, and I didn't believe it. But uh, he he showed me the articles where he said it. He sat more 95, 96. Uh, he still thinks he throws about 95, but uh, he, he slowed down a little bit, and I think I've passed him up a little bit now. What 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 did you throw hardest in baseball? The hardest I got up to was 96. I was at the state tournament, and I, in I, Texas. I yeah, state tournament, high Texas, school. Yeah, high school, and uh, I went out and I was throwing, and I was. I was humming it in there, and then about inning four, I was about 91 because I, I let, let go of all my juice. Why football over baseball? It's just the love of the game. I mean, honestly, I'd played baseball my whole entire life. I, I thought I had experienced everything I could experience. I'd learned almost everything that I could have learned. And with football, I really didn't start playing until I was a junior in high school where I started playing quarterback. And I knew that I had a lot to learn, and I, I enjoyed the challenges of having to learn every single year and getting better every single year. What do you say to parents who put their kids in one sport when they're fifth, sixth, seventh graders because they feel that's going to give them the best opportunity either to get a college scholarship or to be really good at that game? Yeah, I mean, I think it works both ways. I think sometimes that does help, help kids focus on what sport they want to play. But at the same time, you learn from just competing. You learn from playing every sport. You learn from having to find ways, even if you're not the best at one sport, but you get to find ways to have success. And so for me, I played basketball all the way to my senior year of high school. I played baseball for a year in college even. And I, I started football and really started playing that, I mean, until now. And it's, I've learned how to compete in everything I do. And I've learned how to utilize all those other sports of being able to fill space in basketball, being able to do all these different arm angles and, and foot, um, baseball. And it's really translated to me on the football field. Have you been remotely surprised? 5,000 yards passing, 50 touchdowns, one player in the history 
of this game, 99 seasons, has thrown more than 50 touchdowns in a year. You did it in your first year starting. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely surprised that we, we had all those stats as a team. I mean, I knew we had a, t a chance to be really, really good. I mean, you see the work ethic these guys have, you see the talent, and I knew if I just kind of did what Coach Reed wanted me to do, we'd have a chance to win a lot of football games. But at the same time, I mean, you, you never expect to have the numbers that we had. And so I knew if I, if I just did my role that I would, we would have a good season and had a chance of being, having this opportunity to be in the playoffs. But at the same time, I didn't know I was going to have the, the yards and the touchdowns that I have. Is it, is it exciting to you? Fun? What do you think when you think of that? Well, I mean, it's extremely fun. I think it's extremely fun to be on this team. I mean, if you see us play, if you see us around the locker room, you see how much fun we're just having, just, just doing something that we've dreamed of as a little kid. I mean, we love this game. We love learning. We love getting to go out and compete. And I mean, I just love being able to go on the field and play with these guys. Mitchell Schwartz told me that all of the five receivers across really spreading the field he saw the potential in your preseason game against Chicago when you started doing that in that game. And then it starts showing up during the year, and it's, it's stunning how often you've got more than one guy open. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's, it, it makes my job a lot easier. I mean, you, I choose one guy and throw it to him for a completion, and you're like, man, you could have hit a touchdown to the other guy. And uh, I, it make, does make my job easier. They have to respect everybody on the field. We can stretch the field horizontally or vertically, and it makes defenses have to account for everything. When you, early in the season, went to Los Angeles and beat the Chargers with a strong Phillip Rivers-led offense, then go to Pittsburgh and you beat Ben Roethlisberger's team and everything. How much of that led to the confidence that you had during the course of this year? We definitely had to start fast. We had a tough schedule through the beginning of the year all the way to the end, and we knew we needed to get out there and, and start fast. And I think that it helps with the training camp that Coach Reed he runs. I mean, he, we compete every single day. I mean, ones on ones, and we really get after it. And uh, I think that kept us going. To, we jumped in and really started fast against some great teams. And I think it's carried through, and you've seen us really be able to battle through adversity and pick that momentum back up as we uh, go into the playoffs. How important is Alex Smith, the starter last year when you came in as a rookie, been to your development? I mean, it was extremely important for me. I mean, it really was invaluable uh, being able to watch him. I mean, he's had so much success in this league and being able to watch out how he goes about his week, how he prepares for the game. When you come in from college, I mean, you don't know what you don't know. I mean, you don't know what to expect. And in, in college, I watched the film and did those things, but in, in the NFL, it's just a different thing. You have to have a plan of how you break a defense down, how you prepare for each game. And being around Alex, I mean, he's just such a great guy in general that he, he really helped me learn how to do those things. When I think of Andy Reid, I think of a guy who, more than almost any coach in the game, is a teacher. Tell me what he has taught you about the sport of football. I think the, the best thing Coach Reed does for me is he challenges me every single day. Uh, he never l lets me be satisfied with just being here. He, he never lets me be satisfied with just going out and trying to make plays. He wants to know why. He wants to know why I'm doing things. He wants to know, do I have a reason for why I went to this guy instead of this guy? And he, and he challenges me. He'll ask me questions in meetings in front of the whole team. He wants to make sure that I'm on top of everything in, in this game plan and, and in this offense. And him challenging me every single day has definitely helped me a ton this season. You don't often see a head coach sit with a player on the sidelines and discuss with them. It's usually maybe a position coach or something. Take me into those conversations on the sidelines with you and Andy Reid. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been it's been huge this year. I mean, he, he asked me why, uh, kind of like in the meeting room, he asked me why I do do those things in, in the game. He really wants me to know. He really wants to know and me be on the same page as him as, hey, do I need to call this play or this play? What are you seeing out there? This is what I'm seeing. And us being on the same page, whenever he calls a play, I can almost say it before he even calls it because I know what he's going to call. And that, I mean, that's, that's really, it's huge whenever you're trying to be an efficient offense, execute against a, a great defense. And we've played a lot of good ones. And uh, it, it keeps us in the same communication the whole game long. Let's go to Denver, week four of this season, your fifth NFL game. Third down and five with three minutes left in the game. You're down three. You got to complete a pass. You roll to your left and somehow, some way, you complete a six yard pass to Tyreek Hill. Only you complete it left handed. <laughs> so I got to know what's going through your head as you're rolling around on that play. 
So it was, a, it, it, was, it was a third down. It was a big play in the game. Uh, we were trying to drive down to take the lead, and they, Denver has a, a great defense. And so they, they, they came with a, a fire zone pressure, one that I hadn't seen, one that was unscouted, and I'd, I hadn't sent the protection the right way. And so I knew I needed to get the ball in my hands. They had covered up my hot, my hot throw, and so I knew I had to buy some time. And so I, I scrambled out to the left. Uh, Vaughn was chasing me. I mean, he's not a guy you can get away from. And so I started rolling out, and I felt Vaughn behind me, and I knew I couldn't reach back and throw it with the right hand. And so I, I saw Tyreek open, and I just thought I could get it to him with the left, and I put it out there, and just I kind of like shot put it. it I didn't really throw. It was a little ugly, but it got there. And so I got there. it to him, and he made a great play catching the ball, getting the first down, and keeping that drive going. When you saw that play on film afterwards with your teammates, what was the reaction in the room when everybody saw it? I mean, it. it they they give me a hard time, so I mean, I mean Tyreek was saying that he could do it. So I mean, it, it was it was stuff where we we joke around with stuff like that. I mean, we know we have a lot of playmakers in this offense, and I know if I can just get it out of my hands, right or left-handed, to those guys, that we can we can score a lot of points. The no look pass to Demarcus Robinson, I think, is the play that really surprised people about how do you throw the ball to a guy when you're not looking at him. So you get the snap from center on that play and then I want you just to take me through that play. All right so first off I mean I sent my man Dieter the wrong way so I he was supposed to motion this way I brought him all the way back over here and motion him that way so we had four guys on the right side of the, of the field and Travis Kelsey was right here so as I dropped back in the snap I peeked this side knowing that I'm thinking Trav one-on-one -on, -one on it on his route and so I, I, I look over to Trav, they've double covered him, and so I kind of like step up, there's a rush coming, I step up here, and I step up here, and I just see Demarcus Robinson streaking across the field with the safety sitting right there. And so instead of looking at D-Rob, I just kind of give him the look over here, and then I just hit him right there, right on the tra where the trash can was. And so instead of looking at him, I just, I just got, put it out there, D-Rob made a great play, and uh, it, I mean, it was a cool play as the season went on. You're kind of accurate. Yeah, I, I try to be at least. I try to be. <laughs> so, in your mind, when there's all this traffic, you obviously are told from a young age, hey, look for the open guy. What is the key to looking for that open guy? I think the biggest thing is knowing not every play is not dead. Everything is still alive. You're still able to make the throw. And I think every coach that I've had growing up, from my high school coach with Coach Cook, uh, from my college coach with Kingsbury, and then now with Coach Reed, they've given me the option to make the throws whenever the play breaks down. And so I just try to extend the play. And, and the biggest thing I always say is I'm not fast enough to make the big play. I mean, I'm fast enough to get maybe a first down. I'm fast enough to get, I say, max 15 yards. But at the same time, if I can get the ball to the guys that are the playmakers' hands, then they can make the big plays happen. And so every time I'm scrambling, that's my first thought is keep my eyes downfield, finding guys like Tyreek, like Travis Kelsey, like Demarcus Robinson, Chris Conley, and they will make the big plays happen. You're not surprised at all, are you? I knew, I, I knew we had a chance to be good, and I knew we, if we put our minds to it, we could, we could be great. And uh, that, I say it every single day, it was to be great, and uh, I think we can be. And we just got to keep pushing as this postseason approaches us and keep winning football games. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.